How, how has technology changed the actual work of librarians? Are, are they spending their time doing different <coughs> things? Yeah, I, I don't know because I'm, I'm not in the, the library world as such, but one of the things that um, I was thinking about as you were talking about the hotspot lending and, and the, the digital realm and, and maybe where librarians you know, um, become more um, facilitators of network and learning and knowledge in a digital realm. Um, if you think about all the people now who are going to be networked digitally, digitally through their library cards, right? They're like, you know, that you've got a platform uh, within the library space that allows people to potentially network to each other and to create knowledge and share knowledge uh, and have that knowledge be curated across a library system. Um, very differently from what you've described in terms of you know the 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 issues that come with um, you know books and digital uh, forms of literature or reading uh, that have to be curated. So if you create a platform uh, where library card holders uh, in the virtual space are coming together and saying, you know, there's some transportation issues in the city uh, that uh, really need some solving or some other sort of government services or neighborhood services, and you use the library as that platform, all of the people that have the library cards to come together and try to solve solution, the librarian can facilitate uh, the coming together of that conversation. Uh, the library itself can maybe be a link to uh, governments or other institutions as a way of that uh, curating that conversation and lending itself to a solution that might be a technology solution or might be an analog solution. Yeah, I, I, I would agree that the, I think one of the big changes in the role of the librarian is it's, we're moving away from being the experts in finding stuff, um, although there's um, certainly there's research librarians that are, um, you know, archivists and, and such, but, but more facilitators. Uh, and I think that's an interesting role and an evolving role that's, um, that's important. Hmm. What, about, what about curation? Is that, is that the job of the librarian more so than ever? Curation uh, in a traditional sense no, I don't mm -hmm. think so. I think uh, curation in terms of curating um, program services um, that are relevant to their individual communities. Yes. Brian, when you were in San Francisco, you oversaw the design and construction of 24 new or, or, or renovated branch libraries when you were uh, head of the, of the branch of the neighborhood libraries in, in San Francisco. Um, what, what are some of the, the key design challenges of the, the modern neighborhood library? Well, you know, one, I mean, one is flexibility. So uh, as part of that program, we, we renovated um, uh, beautiful Carnegie era buildings, which are um, uh, historic. And uh, they're also a challenge to operate as a traditional, as a, as a library today. They're, they have these sort of small little rooms, and they're, they're, they're not really laid out for the kind of flow that we would that we would want in a, in a library today. So one of the big things is just flexibility. And one of the things we, we know about libraries is that um, as the environment changes, so will the spaces. And so the main thing that we were thinking about <clears throat> throughout that is how we design uh, for today's needs, but making sure that there was maximal flexibility. So there's a lot of things in our program that were around like raised flooring and that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, in, in Chicago, as we're looking at designing new libraries, um, we're increasingly looking at how, how we can design spaces that support um, a variety of different activities simultaneously. So for example, um, co-working is a big uh, um, uh, thing that we're looking at right now is that many people who are using our libraries, particularly our, our, our central library and different libraries in, in the neighborhoods, are coming because they're, they, they ha they're, they're a single person who's running their own business and they're actually doing it out of the library. So mm -hmm. how might we create a space that supports that activity? Um, in, in addition to that, we have you know, huge usage of young uh, families and children. Um, and so we're trying to figure out what's the best way to create spaces that support um, families and learning. And um, uh, our traditional uh, children's library was just sort of small furniture and small uh, books and small shelves. Um, and increasingly, we're looking at how we create a, an environment that really mimics what parents should be creating at home for their child in terms huh. of encouraging creative play um, and designing spaces with those in mind. And um, so number one, it's flexibility. Number two, it's, it's, it's staying current with the leading trends of how um, you know, what we learn about how people learn and, and designing spaces along with it. It's interesting, just speaking to, to um, this last point, um, my daughter and my, and my grandkids um, 
they go to the park uh, every morning. And when she was first started taking them, she used to hear the other mothers uh, saying, see you at the library, right? Um, and she was also very curious as, you know, what, you know, what's going on <clears throat> in the library that everybody else is, you know, is going to. Uh, and her local library, they have the play space outside, uh, and they have the play space inside, and they have, you know, all of these activities that are going on that are very family oriented, and same thing. It's not about little chairs and little books and somebody reading just to a, a group. It's really a place where uh, it's an extension, I think, of the community that they have created, uh, you know, in the park, in the neighborhood, and so on. And it's really it's become a very vibrant place for her uh, to really sp uh, spend time and learn about, you know, in many ways she's learning parenting. Uh, she's learning, how, the, the kids are learning how to uh, network with each other or play with each other. And it's, it's just something that she had never thought of uh, in terms of uh, um, what the library could provide. One tiny example of this is in St. Paul, uh, one of the libraries has set up a teen uh, library space that's just off a basketball court, which I thought was a clever idea. And they're trying it out as an example of huh. see if they can pull, pull kids in through, I don't know, a sweaty basketball game and come in and check out a book, <laughs> see if it works.